Good day, everybody. We're going to talk about dot products and matrix equations today. So if you want to go ahead and get uh, section 2.3 open in the online notes, that would be helpful. You can pause the video now and, and, and get to section 2.3. Okay, so so a dot product is a way that we multiply vectors, okay? And so we take the component-wise product, so first element times first element, and then second element times second element, and then we sum all of those products, okay? So that's the idea, okay? And before we go on, you know, what in the world is a dot product? All right, well, intuitively, the dot product basically tells us how much two different vectors point in the same direction. And this is not the definition we're going to use right now. It's, uh, we'll see this later in the course. Uh, this is what you'll see sometimes in physics or in, uh, in Calc 3, for example, where we do some you know, applications, some physics applications, right? So this is the magnitude of the U vector times the magnitude of the v vector times the cosine of the angle of incidence between the two vectors. Oh, so we've got a cosine of the angle between the two vectors. Okay, so that's what we mean about measuring how much two vectors point in the same direction. Now, obviously there's the magnitude issue going on, so it's not a perfect idea, but again, just kind of intuitively, we're, we're, telling, we're deciding whether or not these two vectors point in the same direction. And we'll talk about that more later in the course. But for now, let's just talk about it, right? So, so if we're going to do u dot v, then we're going to take the first components and multiply them together, and 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then we're going to multiply the second elements times each other, which is 5. And then we're going to take the third elements times each other, which is 12 and we're going to sum them up. Okay? So we just take the product the the component wise products and sum them up. And this is 17 minus 8, which I'm pretty sure is 9. Okay? Um I have got the calculations on the next slide. Okay? And you see that exactly what I wrote out with the mouse on the previous slide is true. We have the negative 8 plus the 5 plus the 12, which is in fact 9. Okay, so it's not that hard, except we've got to remember that the vectors better have the same length if we'd like to take the dot product. And by the way, I've, I've shortened that because we do say that, hey, let's dot u and v, or u dot v. We, we use dot to mean take the dot product of. Okay, but we shorthand it and we say we can dot two vectors. Okay, well, that means take the dot product of two vectors, All right? So, um, again, we use this as a verb, and, uh, and that may be confusing to you initially, just letting you know about that. So let's get rid of that ink. Okay, what does this have to do with matrix equations? Okay, well, if you think about it and we kind of deconstruct this, you'll see the point. Okay, so we're talking about the matrix equations, right? There's some linear system of equations, and A is the coefficient matrix. Okay, X is the variable. You know, just like in regular algebra, we have, you know, um, Y equals MX plus B, right? X is the independent variable. And so here, essentially, the X is standing in for the independent variable in this particular equation. Okay, and we're trying to solve for what? We're trying to solve for where a, the product of ax is equal to the vector b. Okay, well, interesting enough. So let's kind of expand it so we can see the matrix A there, the coefficient matrix. And again, we have this vector x, which is just equal to the components of x, and the vector b is just equal right we have a um you know a 3 by 1 column vector there and we have the three elements of v okay that's not crazy and we've seen something kind of like this before okay 
But it turns out, and this is the whole point of this section in the online textbook, is they're like, hey, because of how these dot products work and how these matrix equations work, in fact, these numbers, b sub 1, b sub 2, and b sub 3, are in fact linear combinations of the columns of the matrix A. Okay, really? So that's interesting. How do we see that? Well, let's think about this, right? Because to, to do this matrix multiplication, we take the dot product of the first row with the first column of this matrix, which it's a vector, so there's only one column, right? So we end up with the first two components of the first elements, right, times each other. So it turns out that this column, all of these numbers end up getting multiplied by x sub 1. And then we take the product of the second elements, right? So, oh, it turns out that the second elements in all three dot products that we're going to do, um, the, the second column, all of those numbers, all of those values get multiplied by x sub 2. And the third column numbers all get multiplied by x sub 3. Okay, so we end up with these equations and we have, you know, minus 2 times x sub 1 plus 4x sub 2 minus x sub 3 equals b sub 1. And then we have x sub 1 plus x sub 2 equals b sub 2, right? So it turns out that each of these three values is the dot product of a row with the variable vector which ends up meaning that the first column values all get multiplied by x1. So we have x1 is a multiple of column 1. Uh, excuse me, tells us the multiple of column 1. And x sub 2 tells us the multiple of column 2. And x sub 3 tells us the column, tells us the multiple of column 3. So it turns out that b sub 1 is a linear combination of the three columns of A. And b sub 2 is also. Now in this case, it turns out it's just a linear combination of two, right, because there's a zero here, so there's actually two columns of A that are involved in this linear combination. Same thing, there are two columns involved, um, but they are, in fact, linear combinations of the columns of matrix A. Okay, that's interesting. Let's get rid of the ink and move forward. Um, Okay, so there's not another slide. And again, this is this is the key takeaway right here. Okay, and this is why, um, as we learned last time, that if we want to know if this vector is in the span of a set of vectors, we just make a matrix, right, where the vectors, the set of vectors, are the columns of this new matrix. And then we can tell if a matrix B is in the span of that set of vectors. How? Well, by doing this. We, it turns out that when we make this augmented matrix, right, A augmented with the vector B, and when we row reduce it, um, so this is supposed to be a line, not a one or an L, right? So A augmented with the vector B, matrix A augmented with the vector B. When we do RREF, what are we doing? Well, we're solving for the solution. The solution of this is going to be this vector X, which is what? It's going to be the linear combination of the columns of A, right? That set of vectors, right? And so, um, we're going to have, uh, what we're going to find is the linear combination, right? The coefficient of the first column is x sub 1, and the coefficient of the second column is x sub 2, and the coefficient of the third column is x sub 3. So this vector x, when I do, when I row reduce this augmented matrix, the vector x turns out to be the exact linear combination that works. So if I row reduce and I find that um, the system of equations is consistent, that means there is a linear combination of the columns of A that is, in fact, equal to B.
And if the row reduction shows me an inconsistent system of equations, then, then I know there's not a linear combination of the, vec of the columns of A that is equal to B. So that's why in the previous section, we were row reducing to answer the question, is there a linear combination, or excuse me, is B in the span of a set of vectors, right? If the system is consistent, uh, the answer is yes. And if the, con if the system is inconsistent, the answer was no. All right, and we'll be back with more in a few minutes.